Hey guys, welcome back to the first episode of the restoration of the 67 Firebird. If it's your first time watching, um, click somewhere around here to watch the very first video we did when we went to pick up the 67 Firebird in Oklahoma back in September of 20. Now moving forward, we're going to remove the front end, we're going to pull off the subframe, we have a lot to do to the car. So today's episode, we're removing the hood and the uh, front end of the bumper bracket, how much we can get done on this episode. And then next week we'll conquer the fenders and see what else we can get into. And if you want the new uh, t-shirts are in, make sure to click the link down below, or yourself a t-shirt, I'd appreciate it. Help out with this uh, build on this Firebird. So with that, uh, let's get into uh, taking this puppy apart. Let's go. All right, first things first, we need to uh, get the hood of the 67 Firebird up and off. So we'll pull the uh, handle down here. And it's a uh, double pull. So you pull it once and then you push it back down. That will bring it all the way up. It's up. Now let's take off the uh, four bolts that hold it down. Okay, there's number bolt number one. There's number two. On both sides, we're going to take off those two bolts before we take off the two bolts that hold it down to the fender. So it's a half inch uh, socket. And we'll get in here and we'll take care of those this real quick and this is the time that you want a friend or a helper or a wife to help you out because these hoods are not light they're pretty heavy take your time and just kind of slowly work your way back and forth don't take each one completely out loosen up each bolt as you go not too much on it go to the side these two bolts right here again we're talking a half inch ratchet Go ahead, and they should be pretty easy to break off. If not, get yourself some PB Blaster and uh, soak those bolts before you tackle this project. And uh, let's get this done right here. Now, at this point, the wife comes out, and we, with the help of her, we let's go ahead and let's get this hood up and off the uh, 67 Firebird here. Go ahead and do these last little adjustments. And again, you know, don't take them all off at the same time. Take your time. Loosen them up little by little until you're absolutely ready to take this thing off. Because it will drop on you if you're not prepared. And again, I, th I think next time I do this, I will start with the forward front bolts instead of taking off the rear bolts first. Uh, definitely a tip there for you if you're going to do this anytime soon. Take off those bolts that are close to the front of the car first leave the two back ones on until you're ready to take it off otherwise you're going to get what uh, happens here in just a second when this uh, hood decides to slide down on me little by little and there there it is see like ah oh, shit so i got a prop in place and go ahead and just keep loosening up those bolts before i need my helper little by little and again these bolts here obviously were not the original bolts to this hood this hood is in my opinion not the original hood to the car because the car was originally an inline six didn't have the scoops in it this is a 400 hood so at some point in time my brother uh, obtained uh, not only the, the the trunk lid as you'll see later on but also the uh, front hood for a 400 so with the wife we will uh, get into place real quick here and we will lift off this hood and one more bolt here let's go ahead and grab this one and it's, it's just so much easier with two people so ask a buddy ask a neighbor have the wife come out and help you or something but uh, let's go ahead and get those last bolt off right quick I think we'll be on our way here in just a second Little by little. All right, here we go. And we're going to lift it up. And here we go. And you can see, you know, Jeannie, the wife here, is maybe 110 pounds soaking wet. Um, so she just kind of helps me. We just lay it for now right on top. Let's get it out of the way. Done. So first part's done. We got this awesome sauce. All right. So here's our four uh, hood bolts. And as you can tell, they're all different sizes. I'm not sure which one is even original to the car. So I'm going to bag them and tag them. But eventually, I think I'm just going to have to order four new bolts. That way, I'm assured that I have all four of the original bolts.
to put the hood on. All right, next thing we do, we need to take these uh, hood springs or hinges off. There's two bolts that connect it to the fender um, of the car. So again, half inch. Let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and loosen these up on both sides. You can see the original AC of this car is right there. I'm still debating. I, I think I'm going to lean more towards removing the factory AC just to give me more room in the engine compartment and add in a aftermarket, more modern AC system to the car down the road. Just everything I've seen, that the price to retrofit, or not retrofit, but upgrade and maintain the original 1967 uh, factory AC system, uh, yeah, just way too cost prohibitive, and, and this doesn't cool as much as the new stuff. So we'll be getting that out. So back to it, half inch, take your time, grab each one of these out. We'll get in there. And again, that spot is tight because that AC condenser is right there. You know, like a modern system, that condenser is in the front by the radiator. But the early systems, that condenser was in that little box coming right off the firewall. And it uh, makes very little room to switch out spark plugs and to work on most anything in that general area right there. Let's go ahead and we'll get this out. Little by little, rocking it. And... See if I can lift this out real quick here. Almost there, almost. Again, just a tight spot. And that should just about do it. Oh, let me get back in here with that. Some of these bolts have been in place since the car was new and back in 67. So 50 plus years. There we go. All right, so I think with that, we can lift this out real quick here. And, man, that bolt. There it is. Got it. Got it. And then we'll grab that front one and take it out. And then we can lift out the passenger side hinge. And you can say it's bented, so I may have to replace that one. Or if I can uh, fix it, I will. So, off to the part bins. Now on the other side, on the driver's side, again, go ahead and just with that half inch ratchet, just start taking it off. And again, I like to take everything off little by little instead of removing each bolt. Just break it loose, loosen it up, switch the front. So much easier that way, in my opinion. I'm, for this point, I'm pretty sure that the bolts that hold the hinges to the fenders, those are still the original bolts from uh, GM and Pontiac. Um, so I won't have to worry too much about those, but they are pretty rusted. I'm going to have to find a way to uh, renew them, make them look factory new again. So if you have an idea on uh, how to do that, will you comment down below and let me know if you have a trick or a tip on restoring those bolts. So let's get this one out. All right, there's one bolt. And let's grab that front bolt. And just hold it straight. And little by little. We'll get her out. All right, there she is. We got both hinges out. All right. Now, I just kind of wanted to show you where those bolt to. They go to the fender. So if you're going to do any kind of fender work, or if you're going to remove your fenders like we are, go ahead and pull those out. You can kind of see the fender there, the bolts that hold that fender to the car itself. And then you have an, a fender and you have an inner fender. That's that uh, black part right there. And on our 67 here, the wiring goes between the inner fender and the outer fender. So next week when we go to pull that, we'll uh, make sure we pull that out. Looking over yonder, there you can see the two spots where the hinge bolts go on the passenger side. And again, here you can see those bolts look all the same. Uh, rusty, but um, I'm sure I can rejuvenate them and get them looking good once again. All right, let's turn our attention to that front bumper. If you remember in the last video, we just kind of mocked up the bumper. Just want to see what the bumper looked like. I had not seen it on the car since we picked it up back in September. I just grabbed four mix-match bolts, just enough to uh, 
get that bumper on to check it out. And you can see that bumper right there is a V6 bumper or an inline 6 bumper. Only the V8s in the uh, 400s, I mean, have the uh, the arrowhead crest in the center. All right, let's see if we can pull this bumper off real quick. We'll pull off these bolts real quick. And again, these were just some bolts I had laying around that we threw in just to see what the bumper would look like attached to the car. I was actually looking forward to that. So we'll go ahead and get these out of the way. And there's four of them right there. Now there's supposed to be more on the bottom, but I didn't install those. So when you guys go to do this yourself, just take a moment and look around before you pull it off a bumper on a uh, fiber here. So kind of getting that last bolt out of the way. Kind of move it up and down. Obviously when it comes time to put this all back together, it's going to take some massaging to uh, get this bumper into place here. Go ahead and pull this next bolt off. And again, this bumper has been off. When we first picked up the the Firebird back in September, the bumper was laying off in the grass. So all the hardware to attach it correctly to the car is missing. Um, and the cool thing is, most of the parts that you need to restore one of these classic first-gen Firebirds or uh, Camaros, you can buy from the various parts catalogs out there. So with that, I think we're getting real close here to pull this bumper off. Let's see here. And make sure we have everything done. And there it is. It's off. Let's go ahead and just pull it. Nice. We got a bumper. It is off. Of course, the wife comes to let me know about something. <laughs> and we got this. Let's go ahead and just put this bumper off to the side and we'll tackle the next phase of this front end teardown. So next, the headlights are actually part of that top support. So don't remove those unless you need to. That's part of the headlight assembly. But each headlight is held in with two screws that go into a plastic connector. And obviously there's the uh, headlight connector. Then there's a spring down here. You can kind of see it right there. Each headlight has that spring, and then there's two screws, really long screws, that go into a plastic um, connector that holds it then to the uh, subframe there. Let's go ahead and get this going. So I'll go ahead and see if I can't pull this out. Now these two here are already out. Just that spring is holding it on. And I tried to just unlatch it from the bezel that holds in the the headlight but did not work so on a Porsche um, its connector is just that top part that you can kind of see right there however on a Firebird and it could be on a Camaro that connector is actually much bigger and kind of more in conference uh, the the roundness of the headlight so I assumed only that top part would come out but it wasn't so I decided to go ahead and just unclip the spring in that lower corner right there on the left hand side give myself some more working room to see what was going on and then once that spring was released now that spring is somehow permanently connected to that subframe so you don't have to worry about trying to chase down that spring when it when you unattach it so now that the light is out I need to get that wiring harness off the back of the seal beam and again, so let me grab a screwdriver, and I think if I pry up on it, and again, this is just not that top little square nub that you see there. It's actually kind of a, a, a curve, like a half moon, that goes around the light. So once you understand that's all one big plastic piece, um, and again, who knows? Oops, oh, I just dropped the damn thing. <laughs> but there's a wiring harness. You can see how much bigger it is uh, than normal. And, of course, I cracked this seal beam, but that's okay. Um, new seal beams are coming. Actually, I'm going to upgrade to an H1 um, halogen bulb down the road. But for now, I have this one out, and uh, we got, you know, two more to go. So, remember I told you how those three screws. So there's three screw, two screws per light, and then there's a spring. So, go ahead and just unscrew that completely out. Let me go ahead and grab this. And there it is. 
and it has kind of a uh, plastic um, an, a, attachment that attaches it to the actual metal subframe. Go ahead and take those and put those away for later. And now we can kind of wiggle it. There's one more here at the very top. So we'll grab our electric screwdriver and we'll get rid of that. We'll pull that off. Here we go. Let's get in there one more time. Get it all the way out. There we go. I'm going to hold it this time so I don't drop the damn thing. Okay, there we go. Now, this one wasn't even connected. So, I'll go ahead and pull that off of that uh, spring. We have uh, this side done. And uh, we're missing a few of the plastic connectors for the screws. I'll go ahead and pull out this one all the way. You don't have to remove those screws if you're replacing headlights. Uh, just enough to where it will loosen up. Because when you go to put it back in, you can slide it in and then tighten it down to adjust it just right. Um, trying to see if I can get that plastic piece out. I can't at this point. So we're going to need, you know, all four new plastic nubs that go into the metal subframe that those screws will screw into when we go to put this back together. Now, there are two bolts that hold this subframe to the frame of the car. So let's just go ahead and double check our wiring here. We should have a just normal lights and then a um, high beam light. Unlike on the Porsche where the one bulb does both duties, here you can see it's a different type connector as one bulb does driving lights and the other one does the high beams. Go ahead and check. Now on this one here, down here is the turn signal indicator on a 67. On a 68, they move, and on a 69, they're in a different spot as well. So only in 67 is the turn indicator light right there. And I only have one on the driver's side. The passenger side is missing. Again, where it's at, what happened to it, no clue. We're not going to worry about it. Let's just go ahead and remove this one. There are two screws that hold the um, housing to that lower valance. And I believe those are probably a quarter inch um, screws that come off. So let's go ahead and take those off real quick and we'll release it. Let's get in there and do that real quick. Little by little. And again, just like before, you know, don't take one out automatically. Loosen one jump to another one, loosen that one a little bit, and uh, do it together. All right, there it is. There's that screw. And then we'll go ahead and finish taking off that other one. The bulb in this one is burnt out, by the way. So we'll go ahead and get new bulbs, obviously, when it comes time to put everything back together. And like I said, we'll have to buy an entire new assembly for the passenger side because we're missing it. Wherever it's at, who knows? Let's go ahead and grab this one and we'll get it out of here. Now, the wiring harness for this light is actually detachable. So it's kind of a pigtail that comes off the main wiring harness. Um, at first, I thought possibly I would have to de disconnect it like I did the headlights at the bulb. But for some reason, when I tried to do that, it did not work out for me so well. So I'm thinking... Let's just go up and remove it from the actual wiring harness. I did happen to take a look at the uh, wiring diagram for a 67 Pontiac Firebird and notice that. So um, again, it you can there's a rubber boot on the back, but uh, it's on there about three fourths of an inch onto that. So I decided to go and just remove it from the main wiring harness. So if you go up into the inner fender and look for it, you will find the connector. And this is it right here. And then again, it's probably never been removed in 50 plus years. So I just took my uh, pair of pliers and just wiggled, wiggled, wiggled. And just kept going at it until she popped out. Then you can pull it out from the front. And we can remove that entire turn signal assembly from the front of the car. And I'm assuming this is going to be pretty similar for all the first gen cars at least. And it could be the same as the second gen and third gen cars as well if we're working on a Firebird or a Camaro. Let's get this out. Pull it out from the front here. And there it is. Kind of get an idea. Let me show you here. All right, so back to the passenger side. Now we're missing one complete headlight. Um, it, it fell off during our trip back from Oklahoma. 
And let's go ahead and let's undo this other light here. And again, it's just been kind of hanging. We'll get our screwdriver and we'll pop off that connector. Get that up and out of the way. Man, when these have been on for, again, at least 25 years, could have been longer, who knows, on this on this car. But just kind of take your time. It's a plastic connector. It has three um, little ends. That has female ends on the, the plastic connector. And, of course, there's three metal connectors on the seal beam itself that it plugs into. So take your time and just kind of wiggle it up little by little and you will get that plastic connector off of that seal beam. All right, and let's just wiggle it and wiggle it. And it should come off here in a second. Let me just grab a hold of it. And it just doesn't want to come off today. It's like the other one, just being stubborn. Yeah, well, it's from Oklahoma. All right, there it is. It is off, put that aside. Well, one of the tabs from the seal beam actually got stuck inside the uh, connector. So give me a minute here and let me just pull that out. Again, we're going to be replacing all the headlights with um, new H1's uh, beams, uh, H1 headlights. They're more of a European look. I, uh, I upgraded my 67 Porsche to H1's after going from seal beams. Uh, much better, like probably 50 to 100 percent brighter and it's not that hard of a job to do. You have to do some wiring, you add some relays, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. And wow, the difference in lighting, amazing. So let me just finish up here and we'll get this out. There we go, all done. So here's what we got. Here's a turn signal assembly with its pigtail. I'm gonna need to buy another one, uh, either new or find it used. Here's my baggie of all the screws that came off of that. And here's our three out of four headlights. So somewhere in Oklahoma or Texas, the fourth one is. So if you happen to find it, let me know. Drop me a comment down below. But these uh, bezels, we need to keep those. So I'll eventually ditch the seal beams and retain those bezels and have to pick up a fourth one. Next, let's remove this lower valance. There's simply a couple bolts that uh, attach it to the hinge release, the hood release bolt. There should be one up here and one at the bottom. Let's go ahead and just get these done. And again, this is a half inch bolt that removes this lower valance. Let's go ahead and get this started. I'm not gonna remove it all the way, just loosen it up a little bit. Get that going. Good, good, all right. Good, making sure it's just kind of finger tight. Good, all right, now, let's uh, one more time just to kind of get it to where I want it. And you know what, let's go ahead and remove the bolt. Might as well, yep, now it's loose. So we have one back here that's on the uh, radiator support frame. And that goes in from the bottom. So you can grab another half inch and just loosen that up a little bit. We'll get that, good, good. Next, so there on the 67 Firebird, there's a small like um, panel that kind of connects up to the fender. Um, I have both pieces, but when I picked the car up, the passenger side um, assembly was off the car already, and I have it. But the one on the driver's side is there, and there's three bolts that connected to the lower part of the fender, but that lower part is its own separate piece. Um, and again, those three bolts, yeah, you're just going to have to get creative, soak them in some uh, PB blaster to loosen them up, and get in there, and you, uh, you're you just going to have to take your time and work those three out. Again, they are a half inch bolts, but little by little, you will get in there and get those out. <laughs>
last bolt holding this all together and of course you'll have to do this to the uh, passenger side as well but ours was missing on my 6M Firebird it was missing the bolts that side so we'll go ahead and remove this last half inch nut and bolt and there she is that lower balance is out we're getting so much closer to getting this whole entire front end off the 6 7 Firebird removed. Alright, so let's put this off to the side and uh, let's work on that headlight assembly up top. Alright, so there are two bolts that connect the headlight assembly or that top um, panel to the frame of the car. There's one on top and that's a 15 millimeter and the one on the bottom I believe is a, a regular 13 millimeter. But that top one is a deep socket, so make sure you have a deep socket on that to get in there and grab that out and again just kind of loosen it up break it free uh, if you need to uh, I always recommend on a car this old grab yourself a can of, of uh, PB and uh, get in there and spray down all your bolts if you can the night before make sure those are loose if they haven't been removed in 50 plus years so we'll go ahead and we'll get this top one loosened up for us and then Next, let's go ahead and we'll tackle the bottom one, and that will free off this side of the uh, Firebird, that top uh, headlight bracket into the that top assembly right there. So those two bolts done on this side, we'll go ahead and we'll do it on the passenger side as well. And I think we'll be in a spot where we can remove this uh, top plate with those uh, headlight buckets. All right, let's uh, let's get some more screws undone. Alright, so up here on top you can see there's a few bolts that connect everything together. And we can pull those off real quick here. And with that, we should be able to pull off that uh, headlight uh, top assembly from the car. And that also kind of holds in that uh, hood latch. So with that, just kind of wiggle it through and bam! We are out! I'm going to kind of give you a close-up look of that part right there so you can kind of get an idea of what you'll be dealing with in the future here real quick. Let me grab this and we'll grab another camera and we'll get into it. So here you can see what's left. Now these panels here are for an AC car or for a Pontiac 400 uh, to allow for additional cooling. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate or remove these ones completely out of the way and as you can tell we are missing several uh, screws so when it comes time to put this all back together we're gonna have to do that and there's just a couple more screws down there and we're gonna pull this completely out all right so that top piece that we pulled out kind of give you an idea here what we're uh, what we have the bolts that hold everything together you can see on that back side I went ahead and put those screws back into that headlight assembly just so I don't lose them and then I have only one of the two of the rubber bumper uh, bushings so they go right here on the ends I'm gonna need to get two more new ones obviously I'm missing one so uh, yeah I'll have to uh, order two new ones anyways but just kinda give you an idea of where those belong on the car give you an idea on that uh, headlight assembly so let's uh, head back to the front of the car all right, so let's go ahead and remove those AC plates that uh, that are right here and also the brackets that go to the inner. Now, if you also notice, I'm missing the structural reinforcement bracer bars that connect to the front right there to the side of the fender. Um, where those went, we have no idea, but we will definitely get a new set of those down the road. Uh, in the near future so there's a couple bolts and they're all the same go ahead and just undo those on each side of the car and if you don't have AC that's okay all the all those extra all they do is kind of direct I guess more airflow into the uh, engine bay so that way the air conditioner condenser uh, gets a little bit more cooling while you're driving but uh, all those are half inch bolts are all the same um, and again, we're missing some, so I'll eventually either have to order a new bolt kit or maybe run by the local hardware store. If you guys have a source for those, uh, MPD, uh, Central, whatever it's called, leave me a link below. Let me know what you guys think for replacement hardware for the front end on these Firebirds and Camaros. 
We'll go ahead and get the rest of these bolts out real quick here. We're almost done uh, removing that whole front piece of our 6.7 Firebird. Uh, and again, this took probably, um, you know, probably about two, two hours or so, maybe three, with uh, drink breaks and uh, refreshments. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way here. And some of those bolts, um, we just know to spin, so we just kind of left them in the end, and we'll get them out eventually. Just decided to move forward. As you can see on that side there, obviously we're missing a ton of bolts uh, in hardware that attach that to that side there. But we'll go ahead and get all this undone. And I think it's time. So, let's go ahead, and there it is. We got all those pieces out of the way. All right, the last thing we need to do is remove that center section. Let's go ahead and get in focus here. Focus, focus. I need a camera operator. If anybody's in the Phoenix area and wants to help me out on this project, be my camera operator or just hang out and uh, have a couple beers, uh, drop me a line. I could, I could use some help this summer. So there's a couple bolts that hold this top part of the hinge and spring to the uh, core radiator support. We'll take those two bolts off and get those moving. And then down below there's that last one that holds this whole section. So it's basically three bolts that hold the latch assembly um, and pull to the car. So we'll go ahead and get those out. That's again a half inch drive on that one. All right, and with that bottom one done, let's get this top one undone, and one more. And with those three bolts, we will have the uh, spring and the hood latch assembly removed from the 67 Firebird here. And there we go. And we've removed that. We now have that whole front end disassembled. Put that off to the side. All right, so here's what the front of our 67 Firebird looks like with its bumper and all of its front uh, accessories and valance removed. And we are ready to tackle those fenders next week. All right, guys, thank you so much.